نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله تعالى فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما We thank and praise Allah He is the most entitled of our praise and our gratitude and We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness We ask Allah for guidance We ask Allah for protection we bear witness that no one is worthy to be worshipped except Allah alone and we bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his last and final prophet and messenger. O oh Allah, we beg you to shower our beloved messenger with compliments and salutations along with his family and his companions and all of those who follow his way, his sunnah until the end of time. As to what follows, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has reminded us in dozens of places in the Qur'an to have taqwa of him as it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's right upon us. And to make sure that we are in a state of submission and obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, fulfilling what He commanded and abstaining from what He prohibited. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the Sahaba, after migration to Medina, after the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam migrated to Medina, shortly thereafter the Qibla, the direction of Salah was changed. Initially, they used to pray, the Prophet وسلم, and the early believers would perform salah facing the direction of Al-Aqsa, Jerusalem, Baytul Maqdis. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rid that blessed land of oppression and oppressive people. And shortly after the Hijrah, the Qibla was changed to the direction of Mecca, al kaaba And that was something beloved to the Prophet but one of the concerns that the Sahaba had was what will happen to all of those Salahs that we performed facing Jerusalem, facing Baytul Maqdis. And this concern tells you a lot about the Sahaba and what was important to them and what was valuable to them. What is it that they were concerned about? So they asked the Prophet wasallam, what will happen to those Salahs that we prayed towards the Qibla, the old Qibla? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at that time revealed some verses in Surah Al-Baqarah. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam recited to the community in Surah Al-Baqarah where Allah said, وَمَا كَانَ اللَّهُ لِيُضِيعَ إِيمَانَكُمْ Allah said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not allow your salah to the old qibla to go in vain. And the scholars of tafsir say here that Allah used the word iman to refer to salah. Even though Iman is more comprehensive. But to show you the importance of Salah and what kind of Iman is there if there is no Salah. But the premise of this ayah, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is making very clear, is that there will not go any good deeds that were done in the past to the old Qibla that will go without being rewarded. Even though the Qibla changed, even though those Salahs were done to a Qibla which is no longer valid or accepted, once the Qibla was changed, you cannot pray facing a different direction. It must be facing al kaaba But still the ajr and the reward of those salahs are preserved for those believers. وَمَا كَانَ اللَّهُ لِيُضِيعَ إِيمَانَكُمْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us this premise in other places in the Qur'an. Because you know when it comes to our dealings with one another, sometimes we notice the good things that we do and we compliment one another. Maybe your employer may notice something good that you have done above and beyond what is required of you and may get, you get extra compensation or a bonus. It's the end of the year. People are looking forward to end of the year bonuses. But sometimes they may not notice. Your employer may not notice that you've done 
exceptionally well this year or this quarter. Your parents may not notice that you did something very well and give you extra reward or extra compensation. When it comes to our interactions with each other as humans, sometimes we notice the good that we do and very often we are not aware of it. But when it comes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah gave us a promise in the Qur'an. In the Qur'an, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, إِنَّا لَا نُضِيعُ أَجْرَ مَنْ أَحْسَنَ عَمَلًا Allah made a promise, وَمَنْ أَصْدَقُ مِنَ اللَّهِ قِيلًا وَمَنْ أَصْدَقُ مِنَ اللَّهِ حَدِيثًا Who is more truthful in speech than Allah? No one. When Allah makes a promise, it must come true. وَعْدَ اللَّهِ حَقٍّ Of the promises Allah made is, إِنَّا لَا نُضِيعُ أَجْرَ مَنْ أَحْسَنَ عَمَلًا we will not allow the reward of any good deed to go in vain. No good action will go without being recorded by Allah. No good action will go without being noticed and rewarded and compensated for by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We often hear and we should hear regularly because we need reminders to cleanse ourselves that we must maintain good deeds and amal salih and what's important is not just the individual action once because we're not a religion of one and done. This is a lifelong commitment and project that we are all working on. But what is beautiful and what is praised in our religion is the continuity of goodness. To continue upon good deeds. Consistency and continuity. And that is why small deeds are praised so highly in our religion. Because continuity is more valuable than something that is large in size, but is just one and done. And there are dozens of proofs in our religion to illustrate that. The biggest reason why we need to be continuous in our good deeds is because we don't know which one will be accepted and which one will not. People always ask every year after Hajj, was my Hajj accepted? I spent so much money, I took so much time away. Is my hajj accepted? I have to do it only once in my life. But how do I know it's been accepted? After Ramadan, people ask, so much effort, so much sacrifice. Is my Ramadan accepted? How do I know? The short answer is you don't. The short answer is you don't know. Now the lengthy answer is that the scholars have given some signs and indications and bushra and glad tidings to indicate that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has accepted the righteousness of a believer. But the short answer for guaranteed, you cannot say guaranteed. You don't know. And because that is something from ilmul ghaib, because the guaranteed fact is this accepted or not, is unknown to us, the believer and the human being has an, a sense of urgency and a necessity to be continuous upon good deeds. Because you don't know exactly which one will remain on your record and which one will rescue you in this dunya or in the akhirah. Of the benefits of our good deeds and the necessity for continuity of good deeds, the greatest benefit of all is the reward that you find in the hereafter. And there are dozens of proofs to illustrate that. I'll give you one beautiful story. The scholar Ibn Abi Dunya mentions in his book of Raqaiq, his book of heart softening narrations, that iltaqa rajulani fi suq. Two righteous men happen to meet one another in the marketplace, in the shopping center, in the mall, which are bustling places now. You shouldn't go there now. There are manufactured holidays to just increase consumerism, so don't go there now. But there are people, these two men that went to the marketplace, they met one another. One decided to give a good reminder. He said, we are surrounded by people in a state of ghafla, heedlessness. Let us step away for a moment and remind one another about Allah and astaghfirullah. Let us repent and ask Allah for forgiveness. Whenever the believers come together, there should be mention of Allah. And so they did so. The punchline of the narration that Ibn Abi Dunya mentions is that many years later, when one of those men had passed away, and the one who remained alive saw his companion in the dream. And the dreams of the righteous are, have truth in them. There is truth in the dreams of the righteous. And the scholars talk about the arwah, the souls, once they depart from the body, that there is a, another dimension of existence where they sometimes interact. So he saw his friend that had passed away and asked him, what happened to you after you died? 
He said, Allah forgave me because of Ashiyat al suq Because of that afternoon we met one another in the marketplace. We reminded each other about Allah and made istighfar. And because of that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgave me. Our religion is full of these narrations that indicate that these small deeds can sometimes be rewarded for greatly in the hereafter. These are righteous people. Now how about the Prophet ﷺ when he informed us about a woman who lived a life of immorality. A very immoral and sinful person who because of a small deed was rewarded with Jannah in the hereafter. Fadlullahi wasir. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most generous and merciful. And of the greatest benefits that we reap from our good deeds, no matter how small, is the reward and the forgiveness of Allah in al akhirah in the hereafter. May Allah make us of those who are forgiven. Number two, another example. Not only, not only does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward the good deeds of the believers, but inna la nudi'u ajra man ahsan a'mala. Even the actions of disbelievers can be rewarded for in the hereafter. A kafir, a disbeliever. And an example of that is Abu Lahab. Abu Lahab is one of two people from the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam to be mentioned by name in the Quran. And he's mentioned in a very negative manner. He is criticized. Tabbat yada Abu Lahab in Watab. Cursed. Abu Lahab was the biological uncle of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Now eventually when the Messenger of Allah received revelation, Abu Lahab was of the most staunch disbelievers in the Prophet ﷺ. But when the Prophet ﷺ was born, he was born without a father. His father Abdullah had passed away before his birth. Thuwayba, who was the servant, indentured servant of Abu Lahab, she came to Abu Lahab on the day when Muhammad ﷺ was born, and she gave him the good news. The family of your late brother have given birth and there is a child, a boy, Muhammad. And Abu Lahab was so happy, so excited to hear of the birth of his nephew, that he did something which was common in those days. You gift someone who comes to you with good news, the bearer of good news. And he gave her the best and most valuable gift in that particular culture and civilization. He said, go, you are no longer a servant. You are no longer bound here in labor. You can go and work and be free and roam the earth as you please. Gave her freedom. Which is a huge and noble deed. All because of the happiness that he had at the birth of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Fast forward, decade, fast forward decades later, Abu Lahab was of the most staunch disbelievers. He used to ridicule and humiliate and fight against the da'wah of the Prophet ﷺ and abuse those of the early believers who followed Rasulullah ﷺ. But eventually he died. And he died upon disbelief. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed a surah in the Quran cursing him. And it will be recited until the end of time. But his brother Al-Abbas, who was of, of the believers, also saw him in a dream after his death, after Abu Lahab's death. And he said, what has become of you, O brother? And he said, I was of those who rejected the truth and I prevented and blocked the truth from others. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala punished me for that. We ask Allah to spare us and save us from his punishment. But he says, of the Signs of mercy that I experience is every Monday I am given a few drops of water. The Prophet ﷺ was born on a Monday. And because of that excitement that he had, that genuine happiness at the birth of the greatest of creation, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala eases the punishment from him every Monday. And that's why the poet said in some beautiful lines of poetry, إِذَا كَانَ هَذَا كَافِرٌ جَاءَ ذَمُّهُ تبت يداه في الجحيم مخلدا أتى أنه يوم الاثنين يخفف عنه للسرور بأحمدا. If it is a disbeliever, a kafir who was combating the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم's da'wah, and Allah سبحانه وتعالى still allows him to experience mercy every Monday because that was a day that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم was born on. And Abu Lahab was happy on the day of the Messenger of Allah's birth. That is the mercy of Allah that is 
for a kafir who is in the punishment of Allah, then what, O oh believer, what, O oh believer of Allah, what, O oh follower of Muhammad, what, O oh Ummah of Quran, do you expect is the mercy of Allah awaiting you as a reward for small deeds? That is the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is the promise of Allah. Inna la nudi'u ajra man ahsana amala. Of the benefits of good deeds, even if they are seemingly small, is wealth and rizq. Wealth in this dunya. In this dunya, the greatest of rewards is in the hereafter. But even in this life, the believer can have an opening of rizq and of wealth. It comes in the books of tafsir, the most subtle of mention. In the story of Bani Israel in Surah Al-Baqarah, Surah Al-Baqarah named after a story in that chapter, the cow. Bani Israel as a community with Musa experienced the loss of someone's life. A man had been murdered and they did not know who was the perpetrator of the crime. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to Musa, command your people to slaughter a cow, take a piece of flesh from that animal, strike the body of the dead man, كَذَلِكَ يُحْيِي اللَّهُ الْمَوْتَى Allah will bring that dead man back to life, He will tell you who exactly it was that killed him, and then thereafter he will die a natural death. And Bani Israel told Musa, are you mocking us? Are you ridiculing? And Musa was angered. No messenger of Allah, no believer would ever make a mockery of the commandments of Allah. They argued with Musa out of laziness and stubbornness, refusal to submit, refusal to obey. Why must it be a cow? They had an unhealthy attachment to a cow. What exactly is this cow? What kind of cow is it? He said it is neither old nor young, it is medium in age. What color is this cow? Safra, it is a yellow, bright, a beautiful cow to look at. The cows are confusing us, O Musa. Tell us exactly what kind of cow this is. He said it is a cow that was neither trained for irrigation nor for farming and plowing the earth. La shiya There are no blemishes or faults or scars on this cow. فَذَبَحُوهَا وَمَا كَادُوا يَفْعَلُونَ Eventually they slaughtered this cow and they were barely able to do so. In the books of Tafsir, it is mentioned a historical narration that as Bani Israel searched for this cow, they finally found a cow that fit this description. And it was in the property of a young man who lived in abject poverty. And they said to him, we need your cow. He said, this is the only thing I have in this world. You can't take my cow. They said, we must have it. He said, in that case, you must pay its weight in gold. And they did so. But what is mentioned in this narration, in the description of this random obscure young man who happens to have a cow that Bani Israel needs, is that he was extremely barun, he was extremely righteous and obedient and good to his mother. And the ulama say from that goodness, that one morning he awoke to find a delegation from Bani Israel willing to pay the weight of a cow in gold for his animal. And his entire fiscal situation changed overnight. Inna la nudi'u ajra man ahsana amala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never allows any good, righteous deeds to go unrewarded. Of the rewards from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of the positive impacts of our good deeds, is not only a tangible reward, but is also reward in the form of ease from a trial and a difficulty. It's not only about getting something, but sometimes it's about removal of a hardship. And to prove that is the beautiful, authentic narration of the Prophet ﷺ, a long narration in Sahih al-Bukhari, where the Prophet ﷺ informed us of three men that were traveling and took shelter in a cave. As they are resting, a huge boulder moved and closed the entrance to that cave. They were trapped. Can you imagine being trapped alive? Unable to move this boulder, too heavy for them to push. Who is going to hear their voice outside of that cave? Who will know that they are there? It seems like a far-fetched story. Just a few months ago, weren't we reading on the news of a group of boys in Southeast Asia trapped in a cave? The stories of the Messenger of Allah وسلم, are incredibly relevant. And they said to one another, you will not be saved. Illa an tad'u Allah bi'a'malikum. 
except if you make dua to Allah because of the good deeds that you have done. At-tawassul ila Allah bil a'mal saliha Intervention by way of righteous deeds. And so each one of them mentioned something. The first man mentioned, O oh Allah, as you know, O oh Allah, inna li shaykhan, I have two elderly parents. And one day I was delayed in the work and I came home and his tradition was to always serve the food and the drink and the meal to his parents before anyone else. Ikram and honoring his parents. And by that day, by the time he came home, his parents had already gone to sleep. His mother had gone to sleep. And his children are whining and calling at his feet, hungry. Yet he wanted to maintain his tradition of goodness. Continuity. And so he stood there. Perhaps my mother may wake up in the middle of the night. The first thing she will find is me standing there ready to give her her meal. And he stood like that the entire night. Oh Allah, if I did that for your sake, then get us out of this difficulty that we are in. And the rock moved, but not enough for them to exit. The second man came and said, I had a woman in my family of my relatives who was so beautiful and attractive to me. And he wanted to have her in a manner, in an intimate manner, not in a manner that is fulfilling of her rights and is in obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But she resisted and abstained and stayed away because she was a righteous, God-fearing woman. Until she became so afflicted with poverty and a calamity, she needed his help and needed his wealth. And he said, under the condition that I get to be intimate and physically enjoy you in a manner that is not lawful. And because of her poverty and her difficulty, she gave in. And the Prophet ﷺ describes that he was right in front of her feet. And at that last moment, and this is the sign of righteousness, even when it seems that there is no way out, a righteous person remains upon the truth. And she said, don't break the seal until it is done in a manner that is lawful. And at that moment, his heart moved and he left that sinful act of disobedience and went away. And he said, Oh Allah, if I left and got up at that moment out of fear and awareness of you and seeking your reward, then move this rock so we may get out of where we are in. And it moved a little more, but still not enough. And the third man made dua to Allah with a righteous deed he did which was that he had so many employees, people working for him. Sometimes people would come and go and not remain long term. One man worked a days of work and left without taking his salary. And this man thought instead of just saving his salary, perhaps he may come, down, come back seeking it. Let me invest it and grow this salary of his. And so he did that. He invested that wealth. Years later, the man came back asking for that salary that he never collected. And the former employer said, everything that you see in this valley, from camels and sheep and goats and whatnot, is all yours. He said, are you making a mockery of me? He said, no, whatever remained of your salary, I invested it. This is from your salary. All of this belongs to you. Take it and enjoy it. What kind of righteousness and sincerity is that? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala moved that rock and they were able to exit of the benefits and of the rewards of good deeds is ease from trials and tribulations and moments of difficulty when you feel trapped. إِنَّا لَا نُضِيعُ أَجْرَ مَنْ أَحْسَنَ عَمَلًا Of the benefits of good deeds is that others benefit from your righteousness as well. You might think that what I do for good is between me and my Lord and only I benefit from it. Absolutely not. Your righteousness and your goodness has a ripple effect which extends beyond just you and your life. And that's why our individual righteousness is also part of our collective rights upon one another. You being a righteous believer is going to benefit me. Me being a righteous believer is going to benefit you. That's part of the community aspect of our religion. And an example of this is what is mentioned in the end of Surah Al-Kahf. When Musa and Al-Khadr were traveling and their journeys took them to a town, they asked the people to feed them and host them. The people in that village were stingy. They didn't give them anything. As they are walking through the town, Khadr sees a wall that is crumbling, about to fall over. 
So he gets to work and repairs it and mends it. And Musa is perplexed. They weren't going to feed us out of the kindness of their hearts. You could have asked them for compensation for this work we did. Later, Khadr informs him of why he did that. And he says that wall, that property belonged to orphan boys. يَتِيمَيْنِ فِي الْمَدِينَةِ وَكَانَ تَحْتَهُ كَنْزٌ لَهُمَا There was a treasure there under that wall for them. Out of the mercy of Allah, your Lord wanted them to reach their full potential and maturity and have that inheritance and that wealth. رَحْمَةً مِنْ رَبِّكْ As a mercy from your Lord. But Khadr mentions an extra detail that when you look at the ayah from a surface view, doesn't seem to have any relevance to the story. Khadr says, two orphan boys, وَكَانَ أَبُوهُمَا صَالِحًا And their forefather was salih, was righteous. In the books of Tafsir, we find Imam Al-Qurtubi saying that Abuhuma here is not their biological father, but it is actually their great, 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 great grandfather. Al-Jaddu Al-Ashir. Ya Subhanallah. Why would Allah mention that 10 generations before they happen to have a righteous grandfather? The ulama say, to show that your goodness and your righteousness extends beyond you, even beyond your lifetime. The goodness and the barakah and the blessing of your good deeds could go so far that it benefits people that are not even alive at the same time as you. Allah promised that no good deeds will go without being rewarded. فَاسْتَغْفِرُوهُ يَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ Repent to Allah, He is the most forgiving, most merciful. الحمد لله وحده والصلاة والسلام على من لا نبيا بعده اللهم صلي وسلم وأنعم وأكرم وزيد وبارك على سيدنا وحبيبنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا after thanking and praising Allah, we beseech Him to shower our Messenger with compliments and salutations. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَلَقَدْ وَصَّيْنَا الَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْكِتَابَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ وَإِيَّاكُمْ أَنِ اتَّقُوا اللَّهِ The universal timeless message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to all civilizations and communities and nations before us and including us is to have taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Of the signs of taqwa is what the poet described leave sinful acts the small ones and the big ones that is taqwa Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said innal hasanat yudhibna sayyat good righteous deeds do away with and erase the record of bad deeds the message today was to maintain continuity upon good deeds even if they are small and we are taught to never belittle anything that's why the poet said leave sinful acts the small ones and the big ones that is taqwa that is piety and be like the man who is walking over a plain of thorns very careful and cautious where to step never belittle anything small good or bad in al jibala min al hasa mountains are made of pebbles. The Prophet Sallallahu taught us, La تَحْقِرَنَّ مِنَ الْمَعْرُوفِ شَيْئًا Never belittle any good righteous deed. You never know which good deed will be the one that rescues us in this life or in the hereafter. We ask Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala to make us of those who are continuous upon al-amal salih upon righteous deeds. There is a film that will be shown tonight in the masjid at 6.30 covering the life of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the preschool area. And at 8 p.m. we have our weekly FFN program. I'll be with you all inshallah as we continue our discussion of Ash-Shama'il, the description of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Next Friday at IOC, the Da'wah Committee has put on an event titled, I Love Jesus Because I'm Muslim. Not only will it cover the story and details of Isa ibn Maryam's life alayhi salam, but also why that is important to us as followers of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and as Muslimin. And I've been told there will also be 
some good food and dinner provided for the attendees that night. Every Wednesday, Sheikh Muhammad Faqih, our Imam here, has a class titled the Prophetic Council. That's every Wednesday at 7.30. What better advice is the advice of the Messenger? Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala Ali Muhammad kama sallayta ala Ibrahim wa ala Ali Ibrahim innaka hamidun majid. Wa barik ala Muhammadin wa ala Ali Muhammad kama barakta ala Ibrahim wa ala Ali Ibrahim innaka hamidun majid. Aqim as-salam. الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا 